Okay, so here we are with our second part, the second part of our um, lesson on acceleration. And we're talking now about velocity time graphs. So just like we discussed up here, if we take the instantaneous velocities all along this line, and then we were to graph those instantaneous velocities versus time, we'd get a velocity time graph. So when we get here, um, we'll notice a few things. Um, velocity is, of course, meters per second south, but more important than all of this put together is that we can get a value for acceleration and we can get a whole bunch of other useful information from this velocity time graph. So let's take a look at what we see here. First of all, um, when we read the graph, we get instantaneous values of velocity. Okay, and as an example of this, we could say at t equals 4 seconds, we find a velocity of 15 meters per second south. Okay, so we'll just kind of come over here, come up like this, four seconds, trace over. And of course, we find 15. Do not forget, this is of course velocity south, and so because we're talking about a vector, we want to include our direction. All right, finding the slope. So what can we what can we get from this? Well, we know, um, or one of the essential learnings is that the slope of a velocity time graph. is acceleration. This is a very, very important thing to remember. Slope of a VT graph is acceleration. And so we'll do a quick example. Um, let's find the acceleration of this graph. We'll use red. And so let's let's find two points. We've already used four, so let's use this point and let's use zero. These points happen to coincide, coincide with uh, being exactly on the line and they're at nice little crosshairs. So we know that then the acceleration is equal to the slope, which is the rise over the run. So instead of writing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we'll write v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1 because that's our, our equation. And so then what we get here is 15 minus 0 over 4 minus 0. Um, and then we get 3.75 when we do this, 3.75. And now we should talk about the units for a second because the units are uh, going to tell us something. So here we have, of course, the, the numerator here is meters per second, and the denominator is seconds. So what we get for units is meters per second per second. And we're going to talk a little bit about what these units mean later. Okay, so more on the units a little bit later, that's coming up. Um, but we want to then go back to our direction and because time is not going to change the direction of this, we get meters per second per second south. Okay. So last but not least, um, we can also use some information. We can find uh, some useful information from finding the area under the graph. And so here, we're going to state that the area under
a VT graph. is displacement. Okay, so another very, very useful piece of information, the area under a VT graph is, is displacement. So let's do a, a small example with this. And here we have uh, displacement is equal to and the area that we're going to talk about, I don't know, let's do the first six seconds perhaps. The area that we want to talk about is the area that's enclosed. We need to pick a time. So let's just go up to six seconds. And you'll notice that this area that, has, that I'm sweeping out here with the highlighter, this is of course a triangle. So the area that we're talking about is one half base times height. And when we look at the base of this triangle, we get a certain value. Here it is, and the base of this triangle is, of course, six seconds. So there's our base. And our height, well, when we come up to this point right here, we can extrapolate across, and we get, oh, well, let's estimate 22.5 is approximately the height of this triangle. So 22.5. And we get a value then of 67.5. Now, again, let's go in and take a look at our units. Because here we had seconds. And here the height was, of course, in units of meters per second. And so when we take seconds and we multiply by meters per second, you'll notice this is very nifty. This cancels out. And we're left with the units of displacement. So we get meters and we're still in the south direction. So that kind of confirms that the area under a, a VT graph is indeed displacement, because uh, our, our units kind of confirm that for us. And so we're left with this ability now, a velocity time graph, very, very uh, versatile, because we can find acceleration and we can find displacement. All right, so the next little thing, using this as a guide, what I'd like you to do is take a look at example number two. And that's another velocity time graph. And I'd like you to, to practice doing exactly what we've just done. So try this yourself. Determine the acceleration of the object and determine its displacement over the first six seconds of motion. So press pause now. Try this. And hopefully now you've done it and you want to compare your answers to me. So first of all, to calculate the acceleration, you're, or to find the acceleration, you're going to calculate slope. Um, and then so here we have what I got. Um, slope calculation should be in and around 2.9 meters per second squared in the east direction. Um, again, you may have written meters per second per second in terms of your, uh, in terms of your unit here, and that is fine. Um, and then displacement, you're going to look at the area under the curve. Now, interestingly enough, I gave you a graph that started here at this value of 5. So it kind of started um, not at 0. And what that meant was, was that you needed to calculate not just the area of a triangle, but also the area of a triangle, plus this little extra bit, the area of this rectangle underneath. And so when you did that base times height plus length times width, and you would have got 82.5 meters east in the east direction. Now, if this is cause for concern and you got something that's totally different than this, this is something that we can talk about in class, so please please do ask. All right, so moving right along, we're going to now talk about just acceleration. Let's just recap what this means, because what we've said is, and we've talked about this, is that acceleration describes how quickly an object's velocity changes over time. And so this is seen as slope. So let's just re rehash this for one minute. We've got the acceleration, which is equal to the slope, which is rise over run. So really, that's the change in velocity over the change in time. But this, um, let's write it in, in a slightly different way. Let's write it so that we've got the acceleration is equal to, and instead of change in velocity, let's write this. Let's write v2 minus v1 
over delta t, our change in time. And we're going to put a box around this because this represents a very important equation. This is uh, kinematics equation number one. And this kind of shows us uh, how acceleration, velocity, and time are all related. And we're going to start using this equation. So I told you that we'd come back and we'd talk a little bit more about units in a minute. And, and so here it is. Let's talk about these. We said that the best way to think about acceleration was meters per second per second. And really what this means, if we put this into fraction form, is meters per second per second. But that is an ugly fraction. So let's write it out like this. Meters per second divided by seconds. And of course we know that whenever we're multiplying or dividing fractions rather, we keep the first fraction as it is, we change the sign to multiplication, and we invert the second. And so we're left with this meters per second times 1 over seconds, which actually ends up being meters per second squared. Um, so there's no reason to fear, like, what is a second squared, or, you know, what are we talking about? Really, we've just taken this up here, this meters per second per second, and we've put it into a, a way of writing um, that expresses these units a little bit more conveniently. And this is what we're going to see. Okay, so here is one final example um, that we'll work through um, before the end of this lesson. So we have a hockey player, and it takes her 1.3 seconds to accelerate from a slow skate to a full sprint. So she's going some slow velocity, and then she accelerates up to a full sprint. It takes her 1.3 seconds. If the player's initial velocity is 2.65 meters per second north, and she can accelerate at 1.77 meters per second squared, what's her final velocity at a full sprint? So the way that we do this, um, I always solve my problems in the same way. As you've probably started to see, I write what I'm given first, which is that the change in time, this whole thing takes place over 1.3 seconds. I'm also told that the skater has an initial velocity of 2.65 meters per second, and it's in the north direction that she's skating. We know her acceleration. The problem also tells us this. It's 1.77 meters per second squared. Obviously, if she's speeding up, her acceleration is in the same direction as her initial velocity. And last but not least, we're asked to find her final velocity. So we can do this. We've got everything that we need. And we'll talk about now our approach, which is that acceleration is equal to V2 minus V1 over delta T. So here's our equation that we're going to use. And what we need to do then, because we're talking about vectors, is that now we need to take our directions and turn them into things that we can manipulate in math. So because north, we talked about sign conventions, and we talked about the north direction having, in general, a direction of uh, a sign convention that, that north is positive, we will write our acceleration as being 1.77. Okay, and this is equal to V2, which is an unknown, minus V1, which if you will recall is 2.65, but it is in the positive direction. So it would be plus 2.65 meters per second, right? So now by writing this and this, we've now incorporated our direction into the mathematics. Time is 1.75 three seconds and of course does not have a direction and so now we can simply solve we take 1.77 we bring the 1.3 up and multiply we add the 2.65 and this of course is equal to v2 and we end up with if you put this into your calculator that v2 is equal to plus 4.951 meters per second. Now this is important because this plus, the fact that this worked out to be a positive number tells us something. It means it tells it's telling us the direction. If this had worked out to be a negative number and it, there's no way with what we've done it could have, but if we had had a situation or a problem where the final answer for velocity was negative and we had said that north was 
was positive, then this would have worked out. This would have been telling us if we got a negative here, oh, well, this is, of course, in the south direction. But here we have a positive. And so we can summarize, again, looking at sig figs. We got three sig figs, three sig figs in one, and sorry, excuse me, two sig figs in the time, right? So this is our limiting measurement. And so what we'll say then is finally that V2 is equal to 5.0 meters per second north. Put this in a box because it's our final answer. And then a therefore statement, the final velocity of the skater is 5.0 meters per second north. And there you have it.